The We Think Collective podcast is brought to you in part by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial membership at audibletrial.com forward slash inbound. We Think Collective is also supported by May May Jewelry in Atwater Village. For 15% off your order, enter promo code WTC podcast at maymayjewelry.com. That's M A E M A E jewelry.com. Tim's got that perfect radio voice. Maybe we should ask him to rap our intro. But does Tim even rap? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> hey, Tim, you want to give it a try? Sit back and relax your mind. You're tuned in to a good time. Unwind. Maybe spark one up, cause these chicks are random as fuck. Conversations as real as their asses, so listen up, men. Pull out your glasses, no topics taboo, but they ain't rude. Giving that real shit without the two. Two ladies tackle the challenge of our time, exploring the gravity of the feminine mind. Oh yeah, Tim! <laughs> Get him, Tim. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the We Think Collective Podcast. With your hosts, Heidi Bach and Rena May. Hello, and welcome to We Think Collective. This is your host, Heidi, and I'm joined by Rena May. Yes, the fabulous. Thank She's you, thank you, darling. Wearing a leopard print turban today, people, like, I think you should see this. We might need to take a picture of this and post it to the show notes. Just so they can see. Okay. I'm smiling for a camera somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, uh, you're in for a treat today. Rena uh, had a topic she wanted us to discuss. What, what's the topic of the day, Rena? Um, before we get into my topic, I just have another side topic real quick. <laughs> okay. Do you guys ever feel like you're in, in the Truman Show? Like your own version of it? I think you've been watching too much Westworld lately, girl. Like, seriously, sometimes I feel like I'm in my own Truman Show. Because things that happen in my life... It, Sometimes I feel like, how is that even a coincidence? Like what? What do you mean? Like just random stuff where you think of something, then the next minute they just they're stand they're right next to you, and you haven't talked to this person in six months. Can we get a story here? Or I- I'm just saying that no. every day and everything in my life is a fucking Truman <laughs> Show right now. All right. Well, be I'm... careful what you wish for, because guess what? That shit done happen. Oh man. All right. Well, I guess we're having a podcast now with our producer, Tim, who's a, now a world famous rapper because we had him rap our intro for us. I mean, do you guys not love that intro every time? MC Tim in the house. Boom. Yeah. Um, for bookings, just contact grow at wethinkcollective.com. He'll open any show you have. We're going to be his, his rap management yeah, company. Dude, I'm going to be his hype man. <laughs> I'm going to be his hype man. <laughs> uh, we'd love to know what you guys think of our intro, by the way. We never really asked you that. So let us know what you think. Yeah. Um, but be nice to Tim because he's our producer and um, he's never rapped before. We made him do that. Obviously. <laughs> Tim has feelings too, guys. Tim has feelings too. Oh, man. Um, you know what's great about Tim? What? That he was able to just let it go and have some fun and get down on the mic with us. Even though he'd never done it before, he let go of his past ideas of himself as a non-rapper and became a rapper. Wow. So are you trying to tell me the moral of the story of our intro is that by letting things go, your greatest magic shines sometimes? I mean, that's a really great summary. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Yeah. I think we're done with this episode, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> we did it all. We did it all. But we're going to let this one go. <laughs> so let it go. Letting things go is has been a huge lesson for my life. I don't know about yours, Hyde, but yeah. definitely, especially the past couple of years. Whew. One of the first pieces I ever made at May May was a piece called Let It Go. Mm-hmm. And this was in 2012 when I was going through my divorce. Ooh. And the only thing I needed to know in that moment was that everything was going to be okay in every second. Like at that moment, you know, every second counts. It's like people like asking you, how are you doing? You're like, ask me that in five minutes. <laughs> it will probably be a different answer. Right. Um, so learning to let go has been like a recurring theme. Um, and then once you let go, it's how do you be in flow? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's something that I kind of want to throw it out there to you guys. And what have you guys been letting go of recently? And how do you really let it go? And I'll give you a really good example, a relationship. 
I think there are a lot of areas you let things go, but relationships are probably, I don't know about y'all, but I suck at breaking up with people. <laughs> I mean, there's no rule book. Yeah, but it, it just, you know? it'll never, it never feels good. Obviously, that's for everybody, but. Yeah, breaking up is hard to do. To make that decision. <laughs> I was, it was so hard for me to not sing just now. I, want you guys all to know. I wanted to sing so bad. I felt it. I felt I it. Like, I still want to. I felt Tim Keep wanted talking. to even join you real quick. <laughs> I think he did. He did. He did. He did. Um, okay. But so back to letting it you go. You suck at breaking up. I do. I suck at breaking because up. But it's hard. But it's not even like in the breaking up part, but it's... I think as women, we have a really strong intuition, like mm-hmm. really, really strong intuition. And it tells you a lot of things, but a lot of times you make excuses for it. Like, no, it's going to be okay. No, things will change. No, he'll change. No, that'll change. That'll definitely change. And if that doesn't change, I'm going to leave. And nobody ever leaves and nobody ever changes. Mm-hmm. Have y'all been there? Am I the only one that's been there? I mean, <sighs> no, obviously <sighs> Yes, not. it's... It, and it's in that vulnerable moment to like listen to that and say, okay, how do you let something so good go? Well, I think that's, so that's what's obviously really hard about it, right? And I think, you know, the feminine mind, like we're fierce protectors, we're nurturers. So it's not like, it doesn't necessarily come natural to us to give up on somebody or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm not saying that it does to guys, like no offense, guys, I'm definitely not saying that. I'm just saying that like, I think... Sometimes we're inclined to hang on and to try to see what's good in it or to hear the story behind why it's this way and put up with it. And the same thing can be applied to, to jobs even, you know, staying in a job that that's unhealthy and toxic for you that you really should let go of. But being like, yeah, but it's a good job and it pays me well and I have benefits and insurance is the same as saying, yeah, but he's a good guy and deep down, he really loves me the best way he knows how and all these other, you know, descriptions, like you're saying, kind of excuses that we give as reasons that we shouldn't let it go. When really what we're doing is, is like compromising our own inner guidance system a little bit. Like you said, let go and flow and flow is kind of like, that's what women or the feminine does. Mm -hmm. I mean, we flow every month, literally, like Literally. in our physical bodies, but we actually like emotionally are kind of in this constant state of flow. That's why y'all guys always think we're crazy. We're not crazy. We're just women. <laughs> 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 and our, our emotions are constantly flowing and changing and they're dynamic. And it's like a wildfire or a beautiful dance, you know? Um, <clears throat> but I think that when we hang on to something or someone or a situation too long and our, our hands are clenched so tightly around that thing, we're also blocking the flow. Yep. Right? Um, you have a really cool exercise that you like to do around that. Yeah. So imagine your hand open in, let's say, a bowl of water. A bowl of water, your hand is in the water and it's open and it's flowing with the water. Right? Now... Put your hand in a ball and try and scoop the water up. And then it's impossible, isn't it? Right. Now take your hand out of the bowl. How much water do you have in your hand? Well, none. None. Because your hand's in a fist. Exactly. And how how tight does it feel? Tight. White knuckles. Right? White knuckles. So I think the analogy of this is if you put your hand back in the water, that's you in life. And that's you coexisting and just being at one with life, with everything around you. And what we do sometimes is we try and grab a piece because we're so afraid that it's going to go away or we're so afraid we're going to lose it and we're so afraid of this. And then we create this tightness, which ends up aka and looks in the forms of cancer, of Mm. disease. It looks in the forms of high blood pressure and stress and the reason you're on antidepressants all the time. Ooh. Sorry, that was a big statement, and that's I don't heavy. mean to say that's all the time, but a lot of times that's what it is. But when you learn to just really flow and be at one with your scenario, and that's what letting go is part of. So what do you think is the secret to letting go, to being able to let go or to knowing when to let go? So this is what I compare it to, and this is the work I've been on. You guys, there's no secret, I would say. I'll tell you my secret, and this is just my secret. I call it my sixth sense, and we have five senses, right? Heidi, what are they? Sight, 
touch, taste, smell, and sound. Okay, so those are the five senses. Yay! I right? get a star. <laughs> I know. I, like, I, I remember know something better than from me elementary right now. school. <laughs> um, so That's think. The only thing I can so remember. think about it. If your stove is hot and you put your hand on it, what do you automatically do? Get burnt. Yeah, or you take your hand off naturally because your it's hot. <laughs> yeah, but your sense of touch let you know that it's dangerous and you take it out, Mm -hmm. right? We don't even think about it. We don't keep our hand on there for longer than half a second. Right. But what happens is, is we have our sixth sense, which is your emotional intelligence radar to the world. This is your intuition, you guys. Mm -hmm. And what happens in your sixth sense is, boom, you get a bad feeling. And let me categorize what bad feelings are. You get sad, you get angry, you get frustrated, you get doubtful, you get fearful. And that is like putting your hand on the stove. It's a warning signal. Like, hey, if you keep going down this rabbit hole, we are not going to feel good. And you are going to get third degree burns. But the burns are going to be so far inside your body that they may be too hard to heal. So that sixth sense is your emotional radar. So when you do feel fearful and that's that's going to happen, it's now time for you to look at it, for you to address it and find where it is in your body where you mm-hmm. feel that. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. That's the really important step and um you know is to to actually take the time and the responsibility, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you understood that that your emotions were actually like your secret weapon. Yes. Let's just say it that way, right? Your emotions are your secret weapon. They're telling you when something is off, when something's out of alignment, right? But the emotions can also be very misleading. They're complex because they're also connected to not just your your sixth sense, your inner guidance system, but to your neural network in your brain. Like it's some straight up brain science stuff. Sometimes emotions are triggered because of past traumas and have nothing to do with what's happening in the present moment. And so I think that really gaining the emotional intelligence and working on developing the emotional intelligence by doing what you said, it's pausing, taking a moment to go in and ask yourself, why am I feeling this? Where is this really coming from? And starting with looking inside yourself, not what did that person do that made me feel this way? Because that's not how it works. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It's not what they did that makes you feel a way. It's how you're responding to the things that are happening around you that makes you feel a certain way. So I think on that note, let's take a break. And then when we come back, let's talk a little bit more about... How you, because I think you have a really high intelligence, emotional intelligence level, my well, friend. thank you, my friend. You make good decisions, friend. Thank you, friend. Um, let's talk more about how we can really, what practices and exercises we can put in place to learn to tell the difference and to understand where those emotions are coming from. Yeah. So that yes. they can become a better tool for us. And guys... I want you to know that this is for you too. We know you guys have emotions. Maybe you don't have them in as much of a torrent or flurry as we do, but they're there and they're still indicators for you and you have the same sixth sense. It's not exclusive to women. Uh, it is part of your feminine nature, I would argue, but um, but you have it. And so this is really good stuff for you to learn too. So when we get back, we'll give you lots of goodness. Boom. Love you. Tita Meme, what did you want me to do again? Lily, my dream is to have a jingle saying for May May Jewelry. Can you do it for me, please? Okay. If you're looking for love, then look no more. May May Jewelry's got a lot in store. Your feelings are welcome, happy or sad. Come as you are, your heart will be glad. May May, May May, come to May May, May May, the jewelry that loves you back. The jewelry that loves you back. Oh my God, Lily, that was perfect. Visit MayMayJewelry.com to find jewelry that loves you back. Enter code WTC podcast for 15% off. That's MayMayJewelry.com or click the link in our show notes. Hi, it's Tim Edwards with the Inbound Podcasting Network and producer of the We Think Collective podcast. You know, in just about every episode, Heidi and Rena are either quoting from or discussing one of the latest books they've read or have been inspired by. Perhaps you'd like to read, or better yet, listen to these books for yourself. Well, we want to give you a free audiobook download just for listening to the We Think Collective podcast. Simply click the link in the show notes to audibletrial.com forward slash inbound. Sign up for a free 30-day membership trial and download any audiobook you want. If you decide to cancel your membership for any reason at any time, 
you keep the audiobook. Support the We Think Collective podcast by visiting audibletrial.com forward slash inbound. That's audibletrial.com forward slash inbound. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. Ooh, ooh, she ooh. said everything's gonna work <laughs> out right. You know, I can't even sing those words right now. Oh, why? Yeah, I think everything's gonna work out right, you know. Are those words? <laughs> I think so. Okay, welcome back, guys. <laughs> Um, P.S. Heidi and I are the worst with song lyrics. So if you hear us sing tunes and you're like, those are so the wrong words, we're going to say so yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll own that. I am notorious for uh, making up words um, to songs when I don't know the real ones. Or sometimes I think those are the real ones. And I've been singing it that way for 10 years and I will... I will fight to the death Boom. until someone pulls up the actual lyrics and proves it to me. Um, and then usually I'll be like, well, those lyrics aren't as good as mine. The worst. The, the worst. <laughs> I think my lyrics You were guys, better. I hear that statement like once a week. No joke. What? what? No, my lyrics are better. I think my lyrics are better. Totally. I should have been a songwriter. Okay. Well, you, she did write Tim's rap in the beginning, <clears throat> so what else? Damn it. I was hoping I could, I could blame that all on Tim. <laughs> All right. Um, so we were just embarking on some some kind of some pretty deep shit. Yes. Uh, emotions and taking responsibility uh, for where they come from so that they can truly be uh, our secret weapon guidance systems. Yeah. I think I, I heard it. I don't know. I think I was watching something, one of my documentaries, but this psychologist said that a lot of times when we get in that that fear state what we do is we always tend to point outwards and we start blaming the person in front of us right and what she said was if you even just took a second to ask yourself where does that fear rise up from me inside right. of me and how does that trigger me from the inside out and not blame it on them. Like, like for example, if you don't feel safe, you have to ask yourself, where don't I make myself feel safe mm -hmm. right now? Mm -hmm. And obviously, we're not talking about, hey, you're walking in a dark alley. Let's just, that's a different kind of intuition. I'm talking emotionally safe. Yeah, but we're talking about emotionally safe mm -hmm. or unloved or all these things that, that you always want from somebody. And looking at it from within yourself, because I truly believe if you own it on the inside of yourself, whatever you reflect out is a reflection of what you have inside. So if you say you want love, but you're not really loving yourself, look at the person in front of you. How how can they reciprocate that emotion back to you? Mm -hmm. If it's yeah. not even, if it's so dormant inside of you. Yeah, for sure. Going back to what you had said earlier about letting it go and that being so important, I think sometimes when we are having like a perpetual negative feeling, a fear, doubt, insecurities, whatever it may be, inside of a relationship or a job or whatever, right? A situation. Mm -hmm. um, if if we're looking outward, you'll find that that's probably a reflection of hanging on to something too tightly. Mm -hmm. When we start to go in and we actually, like for myself, when I've done that and I've looked inside and I've said, where am I responsible in this situation? It usually is something where I'm kind of not listening to... I'm not taking care of myself in the way that I'm wanting someone else to, right? Mm -hmm. um, whether that's the job or the person or the whatever. And there's an aspect of it where by being still in that situation, and I'm not saying this is the case for everyone, like, oh, you need to break up or you need to quit your job or both, because sometimes that's not it. Sometimes you'll look inside and you'll be like, oh, damn, I'm just being an asshole right now because somebody did something to me when I was 12 and I haven't gotten over it yet, <laughs> you know? For real. And then you're kind of like, wow, maybe I can let that go. And next thing you know, you might feel amazing in that job or in that relationship or in that situation that before you thought was to blame for your negative feelings, right? Yep. Um, so what are some of the ways that people can work through that to know if it's something that they just need to let go of or if it's something that maybe is internal that they need to be addressing? Like, how do you, how do you, what are some of the tools I think one of them, this may sound woo woo, but there are two, you have two brains. You have a brain in your stomach and you have a brain in your brain. 
Okay. Um, I know that may sound weird, but what I mean by that is that the feeling and the emotion literally come from two different thinking centers. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you sit there and if you're still and you're quiet, okay, I'm going to give you something that I just started, but I can't live without right now. It's okay. my new morning ritual Okay. to help me get to center. So I don't know if you guys have heard of the 528 megahertz love frequency. If you just put it on YouTube... It's solfeggio frequencies. Yeah. Some and deep shit, man. We'll put a link on for one of them <laughs> in, the show um, notes, yeah. in the show notes. But what it I do is I pour a glass of water into a glass and I put my iPad, I put the frequency on and I put my water literally on top of my iPad and let it sit there for 20, 30 minutes, however long it takes me to get ready. Mm-hmm. And when I'm done um, getting ready, before I leave my house, I sit with the cup of water in my hand. And as I'm drinking it, I think of things in my life that I'm extremely grateful for. Mm -hmm. And gratitude for me looks like this. What I typically think about is not, oh, I'm thankful for my car, my mom, my dad. You know, I'm thankful for all those things. Don't get me wrong. But I kind of dig deep within my intuition of things that I've questioned from the day before or the day prior. Mm -hmm. Because I don't have very good memory, you guys. I could barely think about the day before. (laughs) So I think about the day before and I thought about times I question myself when I question, oh, I don't know if I have enough money for this. And I I become in gratitude, like, thank you for showing me that uncomfortability, because it shows me that, hey, maybe I need to look at something a little bit better, or maybe release something from within me about that. Mm -hmm. And I do it every day. I do it every morning, literally takes me five minutes or less. And it's freaking awesome. And so you're kind of letting go of things that you've Things within yourself Absolutely. from the day prior and yes. giving great gratitude for the situations that may have been challenging or that felt that brought up fear or doubt or whatever, because you know that those things are helping you to grow in your awareness of yourself. And yep. by giving gratitude for them, it kind of allows you to let them go and release them and they don't have that power over you anymore. So much good. So it could be something really small. I'll give you something I gave gratitude for. So for one week, I didn't buy toilet paper. I didn't have toilet paper in my house and I was so embarrassed. I was failing at life hardcore. (laughs) That's hashtag failing. Failing at life. It was a tough week, but I had a box of Kleenex, right? Just wiping your ass with Kleenex. Dude. I mean, it's kind of luxurious, really. And at the end of my gratitude, I said, you know what? Thank you for treating your butt to some dope ass (laughs) Kleenex for seven full days. Your butt went to a luxury vacation. Not failing. So something, yeah, something small like that versus (laughs) something from, I know I'm so, I'm so stupid, (laughs) but it's just true. Okay. Oh my God. You guys, we really just talked about wiping asses on this episode. (laughs) With Kleenex. Sorry. All right. Um, I love that ritual. And I think that's a great one. Um, I think we would be, uh, irresponsible if we didn't mention that, uh, you can hire a professional, like mm. a therapist. Oh, gosh. Um, it's highly recommended. Um, they can help you to distinguish between the things that are old traumas and sort of, like you said, the head brain stuff, mm-hmm. emotions. They and call it historical past. Historical past? Yeah. Okay, so whatever, the head emotions <laughs> and then your emotions that are coming from your gut. I can tell you I've felt that gut emotion thing before more than once. Um, I trust it implicitly, implicitly. When I feel it physically in my body like that, down in my stomach, where my my gut is just like something's not right here. It's like a, almost like nausea or sickness uh, or knots, you know, in your stomach. And it's like, man, that's a completely different emotion than when you just feel unease about something in your mind that's old stuff coming back up. Totally. That's just old stuff coming back up. That's on you. You need to deal with that yourself. Don't make that somebody else's problem. That's your problem. Yes. You know? Um, so letting it go. What are some of the other ways to know when you should let it go? So I paint pictures. I, I, I just do this picture thing in my head. Um, and maybe it'll work for you. I think of a river. And a river flows one way right? And it's called downstream. So imagine you're on a boat and you're floating downstream, right? You're going through life, boom, 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 boom. Something happens and you just hit something and you're like, oh my gosh, and your boat stops flowing. 
And that's called that sixth sense, which is that bad feeling. And it's saying, hey, we don't have any energy or any... It's like a block. Yeah, it's a block. Someone's building a dam and we can't get past it. So what you do from that point is you decide, okay, let's fix this. Fe- let, let's figure out what this is and let's work through this feeling. Mm-hmm. It's not going to go away immediately a lot of the time. Sometimes you have to just work on it. Or you can do the other thing that a lot, a lot of people do is they turn their boat fully around and they start floating upstream and they go against the current. People always ask me like, well, I, I you know, a lot of things I'm, I should be further than I really I am right now. Like I'm 35 and I don't even have a degree and I don't, I'm like, Dude, like seriously, everything you're telling me right now, your boat is floating so upstream. So from point A to point B, you would have been at point B five years ago if you just stopped floating upstream. So the key is to to how to first and foremost, I think, is how to notice when you're stopping your damn boat from flowing. When you're blocked. When you're blocked, period. That 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 realization point and that acknowledgement point will change your entire life. Yeah. For me, I know travel is a big thing that helps me when I feel blocked. Traveling, especially somewhere that I've never been, and ideally somewhere where they don't speak English, um, which is my native language, uh, because it forces you to think new thoughts. Mm -hmm. You don't know your way around. You're not taking any of your normal paths, places, even in a basic conversation to order a coffee, which is a thing you might do every day. You have to think about how to say the words. And so I just love that challenge. And I love how getting exposed to new cultures, new music, new flavors, new people allows me to really kind of see (laughs) just how small I am and how big and grand the world is. And it makes those blocks in front of the boat seem so small and it makes it a lot easier to move them out of the way. You know, it's kind of like your arms just get stronger and you're just like, oh, I could move this block. No problem. There's so much stuff down Um, the street. I just said bathroom in Lithuanian right now. I'm feeling pretty good about myself. Wait, what? No, I'm just saying like when you oh. travel. <laughs> okay, like, I was like, you did? <laughs> no. I didn't hear you say bathroom in Lithuanian. I didn't even know you speak Lithuanian. There are many things you Is don't know. Is that a language? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so, but if you can't travel, because I think sometimes that that's not sometimes time and money, mm-hmm. we don't have that. What I like to do is get a massage. Oh, that's and good. for me... Let it go. Yeah, because (laughs) someone is actually pushing pretty much every cell in your body to make your blood move. Yeah, and get the oxygen flowing through your body. Yeah, and if you drink water, get a massage. Yeah, sit in water. Breathe. I love to go to the Korean spa here in LA. We have those. They're amazing. Just soak in a tub. And, you know, I mean, these are all good things. I'd love to hear what some of your things are. Um, For those of you who've figured out ways to move the blocks out to see them. um, I really want to learn more about it for myself, first of all. But I think, you know, we could contribute to each each other by sharing some of our modalities. I think we talked about one of them in the last episode, which was sex. That definitely helps. Some good sex will move a block out of the way real fast. Real fast. You'll come out of that like, I have all the answers now. I know everything. Oh my God, I know. (laughs) Remember that glowy feeling, guys. Ah! She wants that. Okay, anyway, on that note, though, I think we should let this episode go. Yeah. Um, We love you guys. We'd love to hear from you. You can find us on Instagram at We Think Collective or our website, WeThinkCollective.com. Rena also shared our email, which we'd love to hear from you. Grow at WeThinkCollective.com. And uh, check out the show notes for that meditation uh, tip. Solvejo. Solvejo. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.